Now, you have all this evidence. Have you published the book? Or you just walk with it in your bag? <laughs> the truth is... <laughs> have you written it to yourself? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you've asked that question. Mm. Jordan, I've not published this book. I need money to publish, to print this book. Because I have fought to edit it. You know, I've gone through like eight years mm. of, of doing this work. And uh, I've had professors from the university review it, peer review it. I've had to read extra books. Uh, like now, I have extra books that I need to read. You know, Straight Science, uh, The Anthropology of Names and Naming, Good Muslim, Bad Muslim. All of these are papers I need to read so that I can finish this book. Beef up the other work? Yeah, beef up the other work. But you know, what is the challenge is that, you see, the other group of homosexuals, they have money. But our group... We have not built an infrastructure to support us. Churches don't exist to support the family. No, they, they exist to preach the gospel. Uh, government doesn't have a, a ministry that deals with it. It is not ministry of ethics. It is not ministry of gender. So you find yourself that you're actually at loss as to where you actually belong. I, I sometimes feel like uh, Professor Oguang. You know Professor Oguang? The, the man who came up in the midst when we were dealing with the epidemic of uh, covid, COVID. And he was there fighting with universities. And yet he needed to be at a place to supported. supported. And for me, I feel like this is an issue that needs government support. Before I go to anything else, what kind of assistance do you need? I need three, Everybody is what? I need three levels. First of all, it's the individuals. I need the individuals to say what Pastor Semper is doing is so important. Let us support him. Let us give him a... a at 10,000 shillings every month this year so he can take the campaign into the schools because there's a grassroots campaign. Okay. There is need to, for those who may have let's help him to print that book. It can take about 40 million to print the book. Okay? okay? To, get a th to get a thousand copies so that people have it. Distribute, distribute, distribute in academia, everywhere. Let me tell you, Jordan, whenever a Ugandan travels overseas, and talks to non-Ugandans who don't know what's going on. They say, where are you from? They say, I'm fr you say, I'm from Uganda. They say, oh, from Uganda, where they kill gays. Then they make you feel like you have wrong. All the ambassadors, all the students, all the business. They have been blamed for killing they gays. Blamed. Because they don't say that we are resisting. They just say, no, actually, homosexuals, I know them. They have two, they create two options. Either you are marching with them in gay pride or you want to kill them. There is no area called resistance. There is no area disagreement. So I want people to support. The if you say you're not with them, you're an enemy. You're an enemy. You're a killer. Then the other is that there is need for government. Why, does, why do we give money to government? To support for us. To support us. And you know, when you find a doctor who should be in the midwife helping people to give, women to give birth, but he's in Ngasima Vikata, doctor, why are you in what? In Rumonde. So you want individuals to help individuals you? To help me, government to help you? To help, then even so that you can spread the gospel. The also. Then family people also. But uh, on this issue, we need government. Because you see, we, I don't have the money. Individuals don't have the money to, to equal the task. This is now an issue of state security in the same way President Museveni buys an airplane. What is this? Suko? What was that one? It is a suko. To fight ADF. To fight ADF because it is a threat to our country. Homosexuality is a threat. Okay, Pastor. What indicators should people look at to get their eyes opened that the problem is at our doorsteps? Uh, number one, the fact that the problem is... What, are th what things should we look at in our communities? to tell that the problem is at inside the gate, actually. Well, well, number one, uh, you remember the, f the, the fact that uh, I think it, it started off with the, us trying to come up with a law against homosexuality. People say, mwe yogeza, mwe yogeza. But when we passed the law, you remember it was a law that was, uh, we put it in parliament in 2009. Yes. It took 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, it passed five years later. 
a similar bill that was put in, which was the, the bill of the female genital mutilation bill by Chris Bariomunsi. They were presented the same day, David Bahati and Chris Bariomunsi. This one passed even before the year was over. The other one took five years. Five years. And by the time this one came out, when it came out, it came out through a lot of tremendous pain. So people used to say, no, there's no problem. There's no problem of homosexuality. Then you go to hear Barack Obama calling Museveni, uh, who Hillary Clinton called the president. And the president came back from uh, Caribbean Pacific in Trinidad and told, uh, gave a speech at dinner and said, you know, uh, uh, Madame Clinton called me for 30 minutes. Do you know what she was talking to me about? Homosexuality. Imagine when on that level you are having people without fear calling his excellency trying to tell him that homosexuality is should be normalized can you imagine what is on the ground so, so number one the way the anti-homosexuality bill came in and was brought down should show you the power of these people number two when you hear complaint in schools and really nothing happens it is started with Green Hill. You remember Green Hill's parents were complaining. Well, books. books. Yes. And then he died. Then you would hear in other schools, other schools, other schools. Before this thing of Buddha that just came there. It has been there. It was not going forward. Now, why? Because homosexuals had entered the system and compromised. When you look at the law of Uganda Communications Commission, they have a section called Don't Discriminate Against LGBT. Born again, Pastor Chiganda was, we complain as, as Uganda broadcasters, why are you putting that? Oh, it is there. You wonder why. When I looked at the strategic plan of Makerere University, there is a section that says empowerment of minorities and minorities are LGBT. I, met, I, I wrote to the council and said, how can you have this in the Makerere University? But you see over there, you've had Professor Tamale teaching all the students of law for the last 25 years, indoctrinating them to normalize homosexuality. And no one was challenging her. Therefore, many of the lawyers, the judges who are their magistrates, they have been compromised because they have been given a gospel that homosexuality is normal. That In the guise of human rights. rights. In human rights. You ask yourself, why are the cultural kingdoms quiet? How could the Katiki of Buganda, Bujoro, Busoga, and others, who are the custodians of mandate of culture, they are quiet? Why? It is unacceptable. Something is wrong. Why is it that major pastors, churches, big churches, why are, they, why are they not speaking? You need to see why are people, when you speak on this issue, they close your page on Facebook. They close my page on Facebook. They take your TikTok. Why, you ask yourself, why is it a woman who got married? They, I, in my phone, I get people calling me. There are groups all across this country where they are giving drugs to girls, ho hormones of boys. You see girls begin to look like what? Boys. Why is those drugs being freely allowed? Why? Children who are too young, you look at TikTok and you see all these homosexuals. Now Kenya saw this problem and uh, with the new president, uh, William Ruto. Ruto. They banned all the films of homosexuality. All the series, they banned them. Say we will not have them in where? Kenya. Even Tanzania. Yes. But Uganda. We are there talking a Rudicha. We are talking this way, that way. I, I talk to the people at Uganda Communications Commission. Why are you allowing us this? They say, no, you, 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 you should complain. I said, no, we don't have the time to complain. Who has a, which parent has the time to look through every series, to look through every TV, to look through every TV show, to compile a report on behalf of UCC? No, UCC is mandated by law to, to do content regulation, all matters content. So you see that even in, in different areas, there is compromise. What the spe deputy speaker saw of what is happening in uh, Fort Porto, this money has Chitu Kidogo has entered the system and is compromising people step by step. Homosexuality is going into schools. You take your children to, to boarding schools and you trust the, the school. 
do you know how much money is paid the teacher the, the, let's say the singer the, the, in this case of budo we called the teacher who was mentioned and talked to him i have his recordings and he said he, and i will not go with the whatsapp the teacher said that there was a dome captain of a house called ghana okay a house called Ghana, that the dome captain confessed to being a homosexual. And they immediately dismissed it. By the time that boy is in senior six, the dome captain... Since what, senior one... Since senior one, what has he done? He what has he done? And then they quickly cover this up. They dismissed it. Now they are talking about this other boy who, who wrote the WhatsApp. Look, I put that aside. For me, I go by what they said. We need... We need a research. You look, six years in that school. When you take your child, look, who is the richest boy or girl in a boarding school today? Even a regular school. Do you know who? No. Homosexual. I meet a wadi canteen. Because they give them that money. Remember that transport money? Yes. There is another fund that I discovered. It's called the emergency fund. That is, if you are a homosexual and you come and you tell the ambassador or the group and you say, I had a state and emergency situation, they have a crisis fund where they can, can cater, for any cater for any situation. That is why you find homosexuals in Sheraton. Big you, hotels. You find, girl, you find a group of five or ten girls eating food at Sheraton. Then you ask them, why are you here? No, we filed a report that the landlord chased us out of our home. We went to the, the NGO. We told them, look, they have thrown us out of our home. We are now getting free. We needed a, 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 a shelter so they couldn't get a shelter. They have brought us to where? Sheraton. There is a new industry now. Yes, Pastor. How... Can we stop homosexuality? Yes, here in the Nile Valley. First of all, uh, you need the experts. Whenever you have a problem, bring people who are what? Knowledgeable. Because people, not everybody is knowledgeable. Me, I've spent 20 years. I'm knowledgeable. You need people like me to sit around the table. Experts. The way you brought Professor Guang, none of these people are experts. The deputy speaker, as good as he is, he's not an expert on this issue of LGBT. Even the speaker, they are not. The minister of justice, my good friend, Norbert Mao, he's not an expert on this issue. Minister of internal affairs, minister of gender, they are not experts. Headmasters, you need people with expertise. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Number one, you need to know what is the problem. How does the problem travel? What is the evidence? What shall we do? I have in my mind, I've already been speaking about this issue. One of the things we need to spend on is we need to suppress homosexual indoctrination, especially to our young people, but also we must build the institution of marriage and family. We need a cabinet ministry of marriage and family. Your Kaguta Museven should put up a Tituina minister. His job is constantly, every day, coordinating with cultural groups, religious groups to strengthen what? Marriage. The greatest antidote against homosexualism is a culture that is based on marriage and family. In a home, there, there is many an ordinary mother and father in Uganda, what the, the, would be, how can they detect the problem and how can they fight it? Uh, you, you, you see, there, there's many details, but I will just stop on the top. Yes. First of all, model marriage. Teach your children, speak to them about what sex is about, an age appropriate. I wrote a book on preparing your sign against homosexuality. The parent needs to be equipped. It is hard for me to equip them now, Jordan. It is hard to equip them. But there is need to, add, to have a seminar. Invite me in your school to have a seminar. Attend a seminar. Because when I tell you these things, number one, a child needs to have age-appropriate information about, a, hom, uh, about sex, the, the road of love, sex leading to marriage. The child needs both the father and mother's influence, masculine and feminine influence. The child needs to be told how they will be able to experience sex. You need to remove sexualized entertainment. There is a lot of sexual innuendo. Now, every TV, every media is showing girls who are saying, I'm ready for sex. Every song. We can't have that. Now, you, there is a lot of things that need to be done. Now, look for me. I came up with a brand. Here's a t-shirt for me called Straight Nation. 
Because for homosexuals, they don't believe, they don't recognize anybody else apart from straight. They say we are gay, a lesbian, bisexuals, transgenders, bichi bichi bichi. Then the only person who can accept a man who loves a woman, a woman who loves a man, is called what? Straight man. So I said, let me take that. <coughs> so I came up with a brand called Straight Nation. Build it up. Talk. Condemn it. Condemn Sodomy. Should parents <coughs> ask some hard questions in schools yes. where I take my children? Should I ask some questions where people sleep, the dormitories and things like that? How? And should schools entertain that? Should we push for schools to open up whatever would be secret? If you're going to hand your child to anyone, if you're going to hand your child to anyone, yes. you must be prepared to make sure that you, it is you, minute by minute, moment by moment, you have supervision over your child. Even in school, when I'm Even at UBC working? <coughs> and if you've delegated, why do we have CCTVs? Why do we have CCTVs in our homes? Because you are supervising your home. If you need to supervise your home, why don't you supervise the place where your child is? Is there, is there enough supervision? The answer is no. Then why are you putting your child there in danger? You've, then number two, you need to know that the world has changed. Many people know their schools from the past. Mm. I, I, Namiriango used to be like this. Namagunga used to be like this. Gayaza used to be like this. Buddha used to be like this. I want to take my child. Like for me, I was Nami. But now there are changes that are happening. Socially and Socially. administratively. In schools. Yes. And, and if this is what is happening to me, I am 50-50. Until a school has been given a certificate of well, we need to have a department from Ministry of Education that can work with the parents to say we have assessed the competency and the safety of this school and give it a certificate. Why do you have ISO 9000? Because you want to say that this is certified. What kind of terms? Who is the say, the, 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 the Ismania, what, the, Warden. Warden. What, si what systems are there if a child is being bullied into sodomy? What is the system there to rehabilitate those who are caught in this issue? Even the idea say, that we chase anyone who comes up, that's not a good. You need to have a system where, where you rehabilitate them. We need a rehabilitation center. Who is going to come up with that money? This is where government needs to come in. But government is afraid of annoying the white people, is afraid of annoying the, the, the Americans and the Europeans. But listen, we have an example from Qatar. Qatar has just held the best World Cup ever. I think you watched it. Yes. But did you know how many years they struggled with homosexuals? Did you know that even when they are trying to put the World Cup, they say, put the rainbow, put LGBT, let the homosexuals speak, until they had to tell them, get out of here. We have a proverb in Luganda, but Okay. Yeah. Look, on, when a bear is fighting for its baby cub, there is nothing you don't do. When a mother is, look, if you hear, there is a mother from Bali who called me last week, Jordan. She is a mother of twins. And her twins have been taken into lesbianism. She called me to talk to me, but she spent the first five minutes crying. Just crying. Just crying. And she asked me, Pastor, can you come? And we have a meeting with the children. Look, I don't have a system. There is no system. Which department does this? We have departments of security. We have departments. Of, no, which department do I talk to? I don't have fuel. I don't have a car. I don't, we want to have a family meeting. Now, these children, they are now, there is a, a group there in Bali where they are giving them injections, hormones. You know, you can give a boy a, a female hormones and a girl. Now, the, the girls are beginning to look like the mother cries. I have a wife who called me last week. Her husband is a homosexual. He has sodomized their children. Goodness. And he wanted to recruit her so that he also sodomizes her. She goes to court and reports to the police. And because the man has a lot of money, bribes the whole thing. She's in tears. You have married men now who have been watching this thing of pornography, of homosexuality. Now they are asking their wives that... These are women. I go in Kampala in shops. They call me on the side, Pastor Janguan. Pastor Twine Chizi. Watch him. Mind you. Watch him. Mind you. Obufumba. Bugenda. Bwononeka. Dijiji. Mind you. Katia. Basaja. Bagala. Kuita. Bakazima. Vega. 
Maintino chitulumo kufanti ya bakazi baba mbufumbu. Nenga tosobula kuogela na bantu balala. You can't explain to them why, why your marriage is collapsing. Exactly why you're coming. Look, we have an epidemic on the size of COVID. And we are trying to, 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 to deal with it as if it is just a symptom. No. Pastor, you, you, we talked of schools and other systems that can be monitored. How can we monitor churches? For example. Jordan, Jordan you, are, you are putting upon yourself an, a, a question which you should ask. It is good. But the scope of it, because we've already been penetrated, when you see the Pope... You are a church leader yourself. Yes, when you see the Pope beginning to say, uh, remove the laws against homosexuality, you know that we have got a problem. When you see that the Church of England is now saying, let us organize to, to do homosexual marriages, and the archbishops of Uganda said, no, we cannot do that, and they say, we are going to break up. You know we already have an issue. Even amongst Barokoli, it is not only in them. We have it in Catholic, we have it in Muslim, we have it in Angle. By the way, I want to commend the Muslims. They have, on this issue, sometimes Christians, because we are connected with funding from Europe, yeah. funding from America, but yeah, yeah but they speak in tongues. They fear, fear. But I saw that the sheikhs, I even called the sheikh, I said, Sheikh Sali, Abdul Sali, has ordered all the, the mosques to teach against homosexuality, to go into all schools. I called him and I said, thank you. But, you, but do you know the Christians? And you Christians, let me look in the camera. I want to tell you, God gave me a word. I was reading in the book of Judges, chapter 4 and 5. On the day of the Lord's battle, there are some people who did not come. Men refused to come. God used a woman called who? Deborah. Then Deborah says, you Barak, come and join me. But there are people who didn't come. And there was one group called Meroz. And I don't know who's Meroz. And after the battle had been won, God says, cast be Meroz because he refused to come and help the Lord in the Lord's battle. There's a curse. Pastor, what do you make of the Church of Uganda decision? Archbishop Kazimba saying, we are not part of you. I appreciate that, but we need to take it forward. Look, we are dealing with the superpower. This is like Ukraine. Can we sustain it as it, Uganda? No, this is like Ukraine. It is a battle against a superpower. What happens is America, in 2012, Barack Obama ordered all the departments of U American government, that is the Department of State, that is the FBI, that is the CIA, that is the Secretary of Commerce, that is uh, PEPFA, the, the USAID. The USAID itself is a $26 billion, uh, is it even maybe even more. Yes. Now, each of these, to put as number one priority, and homosexuality troubles in four stages. Number one is decriminalization. When you see people say, remove the laws, you think, ah, kati tujewo mateka, chijagen. No, that is just stage what? One. Yes. Stage number two is non-discrimination. So integrate them into society. Number three is equal equality. You look at them like any other person. Yes. Then number four is, this is the dangerous one. It is called affirmative action, gay pride, and hate crimes. This stage four is, you know how they are doing for women, free scholarships, free what, free what. And that is why here in Uganda, they call themselves minorities. Why? They want to get special rights. So that when you talk about them, it is called a hate what? crime like for me if i speak like this i've been passing i've got court cases at icc i've got court cases in american court they are waiting to take me to spain i speak and nobody comes you know the government doesn't come to my help they're waiting to open a case against me i've suffered a lot for but i'm not suffering for me i'm suffering for but i'm saying judan you have your experts who know i have I want people to know, Pastor Sempa Yasoma, I'm a PhD. I have decided to sacrifice my professional career because I would have, look, I'm a, I'm a master's of science in counseling. I would get $100 per hour as a counselor. So would my wife. Okay? My wife is American. I would have lived in America and enjoyed a great life. But I said, no, I will sacrifice myself for the purpose of my people. And so I've given up. But why isn't my people coming to my help? 
All I need is to publish the books. We have money to publish everything, to do many things. We even have, we have ministries for everything. Minister of Karamoja, Minister of Luero, Minister of the Eldare, Minister of this. We, but we don't have a Minister of Marriage and Family. Previously, as we wind up, there used to be a belief that you people were funded to fight homosexuals. So, it is not true. If you show me who is, please, I will give you, ask you give me their address. Because you see, these people, they're just there. They are fake. They are, they are trying to create the idea that we are saying what we are saying because someone is giving us what? Money that we are paid for like they are. But we are not. This is the truth of God. So I, I, let me conclude this part by showing you that in my work, I came up with, in that where we start the HIV AIDS, I came up with a flag called... Uh, this one is a flag for being faithful in marriage. Oh, who is, who is tied this thing now? Huh? Anyway, I will just show you. This is uh, one of these is a flag of, of abstinence pride. And the second one is being faithful in what? In marriage. Twitter, you can know we're in a flag. By the way, those who are saying that we should outlaw the rainbow. Me, I don't agree. We should redeem the rainbow. So over here, you have uh, a flag that I came up with. This is called... Uh, Abstinence pride. Okay, remember I come as, as an HIV AIDS activist. For me, that's my background. That's where my PhD also is in public service. Then I came up with a flag of being faithful in marriage. You see, you strengthen marriage and you reduce HIV AIDS. Even you strengthen marriage, you, ref you reduce homosexuality. In fact, you want to spend 90% of your time promoting healthy marriage, healthy sex, healthy relationship, husband, wife, and children, and 10% in fighting the, the, the fungos. Because a, fa a, farmer, a farmer does not exist to fumigate fungos. The farmer exists to grow crop. He's a farmer. With the tension now, what is your message to the country? My message is this. Uh, we need to put people around the table. And my phone number is 0772 641028. 0772 641028. You know, reaching the president, his excellence, is difficult. There's many different people. But I want my phone to be known. That those who are able to reach his excellency, the president, and the first lady, say, no, you must meet Pastor Semper. Bring other people who are experts around the table so that we can be able to share this information. This book needs to go out. That, and then those of you who are able to support me, a hey, pastor Katumu supporting, a hey, pastor send me feedback, send me as financial support. I'm saying if I get maybe a thousand people giving 10,000 shillings a month, chitu twala, china je twala, ni tuweta agobu yambi. So my number again is 0772 641028.